Welcome back everybody to Make It Monday and on today's episode of Blender Basics we are going to be doing some 3D modeling basic tools uh, to be able to generate these two products. Um, we are going to create a few cups today. Um, one, a more fancy wine glass that we're going to be using a revolve method utilizing vertex extrusions to be able to create something a little bit more advanced. Um, but really easy when it gets down to it. And then we'll be going over some basic box modeling techniques for this other glass here, um, just to go over a little bit of a different change um, between the two models and to be able to show different techniques to be able to get those working. Um, so let's get started. All right. So in this file here, I already have an open scene. I already deleted the default cube and we are going to start by importing a reference image. Um, so to be able to do that, we're going to go ahead and hit one on our keyboard. That is going to bring up our front view. I'm going to go ahead and hit shift A on our keyboard. That's going to go ahead and let us add an object. We're going to come over here to image and we're going to add a reference image. And so we're in a routed file path that I already created for this project. We're going to go ahead and come up here and I'm going to go to reference and I have some reference images added here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select this one and load this one here. Now that we have our reference image loaded, we are going to go ahead and I'm just gonna shift it back a little bit on its axis by hitting G, that's the move tool. And we're going to hit Y to move it along the Y axis. And we're gonna just drop that back a little bit. So that way when we import objects, it's gonna stay in our world origin instead of being where this is going to be here. I also wanna go back to this front view and I'm going to scale this object up by hitting S and just making this a bit larger. So we just have a little bit more working room to be able to get this working. Now from here, we want to try to add an individual vertice to start modeling off of. Now to be able to get that added, you're gonna to wanna to come up here to edit and then preferences. When we get that added here, you want to be able to add the extra objects for add curve, as well as extra objects for add mesh. Those are the two add-ons you're gonna want for this lesson today. Um, those are going to give us the tools that we're looking for when you hit Shift A. Now we're gonna do Shift A, mesh, and then we're going to do a single vertice that we're gonna be adding. And that's gonna add it to our world origin cursor here in the middle. I'm going to, going to hope, go ahead and hit G on our keyboard and we're gonna bring that vertice straight down by hitting Z so that way it's centering on our um, base of this um, model here or for our reference image rather. And so just a few housekeeping tools while we're getting started here. Since I have my reference image and the base of our object loaded, I'm going to go ahead and just rename this in our um, modifier stack over here in our collection. So the empty image file that I'm using here, I'm just gonna call glass. Let's do this wine glass ref. And then the vertice is going to end up being our wine glass. And so we have those labeled up now. So now we can kind of get started. I'm going to go ahead and first, I'm going to go ahead and save this project. So now this is going to be my base project here, just in case if something goes wrong while I'm working on it, because I already tried recording this a little bit and had a facepalm moment, had to restart. So now we're here back at it again. Okay. So what we're looking to do here now is we want to extrude this one vertice into a basic outline of our shape so that way we can revolve it and create an object. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of not go quick on this, but I'm gonna explain how to do this with you guys. So we're gonna go ahead and have this object selected, which is just the one vertice. We're already in edit mode because vertices can only be affected while you're in edit mode. I'm gonna press E on the keyboard and now you'll see here as I drag my cursor that it is going to be dragging here um, a new vertice and a new um, edge attachment to it. So it's already creating that line and point system that we're looking for here. And I'm actually not going to follow the reference because of how images are picture, uh, how <laughs> glasses are photographed for references they have a little bit of a tilt to them with the camera and that adds a little bit of distortion so right now what we're seeing is a projected view of what it would be um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that it's flat to create this base um, so I'm going to come straight across here and I'm going to hold and press X on the keyboard to get that straight across and I'm going to go where it lines up on the sides because those should be uniform. We're gonna go ahead and then left click. That's gonna finalize that. And I'm gonna press E again, and we're going to hit Z this time. That's gonna lock it over to our Z axis. And we're gonna drag that up probably a cube or two here. Let's see. 
Let's go about that thickness for now. And then we're gonna hit E again. And I wanna bring this straight in, but I don't wanna go all the way because now we're kind of seeing where this gentle curve is starting that's gonna go flat for the base. So I wanna try to emulate that. So it looks like actually to me, now that I'm looking at this a little closer, is that it, that kind of starts about here. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna drop a point here. And you can already see that I didn't hold any of our axes that time because it's going to start on that gentle curve. So I wanna kind of start emulating that for the render. And then I'm gonna hit E again. And let's go ahead and just bring that up a little bit. We're gonna start, go ahead and bringing that base into life here. So you can see here, I have that gentle curve starting. And now we're gonna get closer to the start of the stem. And now we're in perspective. So I'm gonna follow the stem up. We're gonna go about to here, here again. And I'm just doing the same thing, pressing E to extrude and then clicking left click to be able to bring it up. So let's go ahead and drop, I'm gonna, since this curve is starting a little bit sooner, I'm gonna go ahead and do a closer click there. We're gonna do one more here and we can add more points in the middle later if we need to, to actually split this and kind of refine it. Um, we're gonna go ahead, I'm using shift and middle mouse to bring this down and I'm going to go ahead and keep extruding up the side of this glass now. And again, we're just trying to follow this gentle curve to kind of get this working here. So you can see here, I can go ahead and put an extra point here because it's such a curved surface and now that's gonna be a nicer clean curve that we won't have to affect as much geometry for in a little while. So I actually I actually deselected the wrong one, so I wanna make sure we're on the correct selection. We're gonna go ahead and bring that back up and we're gonna go ahead and just leave it right there. We're leaving it right there because the top of the glass is open and so we're gonna revolve around the center of this object. So if I go ahead and middle mouse click and rotate around our scene here, now we'll see that we have the vertices of the first half of this outlined already. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit tab. That's gonna get us back into object mode. I'm gonna select our object and we're gonna come over here to this wrench tool for our modifiers. And we're gonna go ahead and add this screw modifier here. And that is going to solidify this object while giving it its um, rotation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this here. Um, right now we have it revolving and it's looking pretty well. I wanna see here, what does this iterations do? Number of times it applies the screw operation. Is that the default number? This is where I think it came into trouble last time, but this should have worked straight away. Um, the last time I did it, it was having a lot of overlapping vertices, which isn't supposed to um, happen this way. Um, but this is also just before we apply this object's um, stability or the solidity for this. So let's take a look here. Um, mm -hmm. It's looking much better than the first time I rendered this out. So that's at least a, a, glowing, a glowing light here. And so you'll see here as I bring this and close it up, um, if we decided to choose a different angle amount, it's going to not complete it fully. Um, in our case though, we do want that to be 360 degrees. So I'm just gonna go ahead and reset that back to its default value. Um, that looks good to me. I think that this time it's working how it's supposed to. So thank you guys for this face palm. <laughs> uh, well, I guess the face palm earlier to get me to get it working for you guys this time. So now we're gonna go ahead and apply this modifier by coming over to this right hand side menu here and saying apply. And I think that it worked how it was supposed to. So now if we go back into edit mode, we'll see here that all of these um, faces now have their own edges to it. Instead of it being the single point, we now have the full outline working. And we wanna add a little bit of thickness to this model here. So yeah, oh, this is working much better because before we didn't have, mm, wait. Okay, so now what's going on down here? Because this is not joined, it looks like. We had an extra vertice here. All right, so let's do a little bit of math here. So in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna go ahead and turn on what's called our viewpoint statistics. That's gonna tell us what we have selected at the time of while we're working on this. So right now we have one object in the scene. I have no, um, nothing selected based off of this, um, but we wanna check and see what these vertices are doing. So this guy right here is what I had pulled off from the middle. So let me go ahead and just control Z a little bit here. Let's go ahead and select what would be all of those vertices and let's see if what our statistics say based off of this. I just wanna make sure I only have that selected. I wanna grab this. 
So it says we only have one vertice selected, but I don't think that's true. It says we have one. Let's see. Okay, it did, but I think it's because we weren't in our x-ray mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle our x-ray. That's gonna give us a little bit more control over what we're selecting, almost like a wireframe mode, but it's not quite as um, finicky. Um, so let's go ahead and now select. See, it says we have 16 vertices here. So all of those edge points that we have there at the bottom are trying to um, merge together and click. What we wanna do, we have two ways that we can fix this. We can come over here to mesh, we can go to merge and we can say merge at center and that's gonna merge all those into now one vertice. So if we look over here in the top left-hand corner, you'll see here that we only have one vertice selected where we had 16 prior. I'm gonna control Z that though, so because I can show you another way that we can do this. If you hit M on the keyboard, that will also bring up the merge menu and you can choose at center. That will also do it. That's the same as going over to mesh and then merge. All right, so we have the rough first outline of this here. Um, that is going to bring all those vertices together and we're going to have uh, our basic cup. But things still don't look quite right here. Um, the, the overall shape looks right, um, but we still need to get it, one, a little bit smoother, and there's a few different ways we can make it smooth, um, and we also need to add thickness to this because right now there is no thickness to this. So let's come over here first. I wanna just double check to make sure that our vertices are actually working properly. And the way that I like to check that is I like to grab a vertice and just kind of pull it around and just kind of see like where it's kind of looking at. Um, so in this case, it does look like that the model is reacting properly. We don't have any overlapping vertices that I can tell here. An easy way to tell too is where it's deforming inside the object. So that looks to be doing what it's supposed to. Um, now we can kind of see there's a little bit of extra pulling here. And I kind of mentioned this when we first started modeling that there could be a little bit more of a curve um, up here as well as a little bit something down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit two on the keyboard. That's gonna take us into our edge mode. And then I'm gonna hit control R. And now if you left click, it's gonna give you a, a, a an edge line here that you can go ahead and modify. So we're gonna go ahead and work with that. And I'm gonna scale this out just a little bit. We're gonna bump that out just a tad. And we're gonna do the same thing up here. Control R, left click, left click. And we're going to scale this out just a tad so that we can bump that shape out just a little bit more and get something a little bit more refined, something a little bit more high poly that we're working with here. Okay, so now we, let's add some thickness to this. So we're still in our modifiers menu here on the right. What we're looking to add here is we're going to add a solidify modifier and that's gonna add thickness to this object. So let's see here, right now our offset is minus zero. Let's go ahead and set these back to their default value so that way I can make sure that we're doing this right. Okay, so that is the that is the default. So let's go ahead and, and affect this just a little bit here. Um, so that's 0.15. That's looking pretty good. Something is coming up here though. Let's go ahead and shade this flat for a minute. Yeah, see that's what I thought. So when we have this it's shaded smooth, since it's still a low poly object, it has a little bit of deformed, a deformed look for this, but let's shade this flat just so we can kind of see what we're looking for with these hard edges since we're not in a smooth form yet. Um, that will give us a little bit of a better idea of what this is kind of looking like. Um, and I'm also gonna kind of take a look at our wireframe too to kind of see if we're getting the look that we want from in inside the object. Um, because right now, realistically, this bottom half is going to be completely solid where this cup is going to be what's separated. So what we might do is going back into solid mode here, we might wanna cap this ring off or maybe make the inside faces that we just created um, a little bit closer so that way it emulates that um, sol solid part of the cup where the cup is separate from the stem. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at that now. Um, yeah, and you can see that there's some artifact in here from the stem here. Well, I guess the easiest way would be to grab the faces that are selected here, huh? So let's go ahead and grab some faces. So to do that, I selected a face and then I clicked the next edge next to it and that's gonna do a ring select. And then to continue that selection on, we want to go ahead and um, select the next object down, but you see here that it dropped the ring down. We want to add shift added with that as well to be able to grab the next selection. So let's see how we can get that working. So what I'm doing is I'm just clicking along the edge loop that is attached to that object. And you'll see here that I'm only selecting on this interior. So let's go into wireframe mode and let's continue the selection. 
So we're gonna come in here a little bit. I'm also gonna hide the wine glass reference since it's kind of getting in my way right now since we have the model basically made. And I'm gonna go old shift and alt and we're just gonna continue that loop down on the interior. Uh, let's go to about there. And I'm gonna hold shift S and we're gonna just scale that inwards. What is that doing here? You see how it's affecting more of the outside though. So we're gonna to have to do some, we're gonna to have to do some playing here with that. Let's go back into solid view and see what that's doing up here. <laughs> oh, I kind of see what it's doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and control Z a little bit. We still have all of our selections selected, right? Let's go back into wireframe phone and double wireframe mode and double check. So this one, I'm actually gonna hit the scale tool because this is gonna give us a little bit more control of how this is scaling. We don't wanna control it in the Z. We only wanna control it in the X and Y. So I'm gonna go up to the Z here and we're just gonna go ahead and select this box and that's gonna scale it only interior wise like that. Um, and then I think that's gonna do what we're looking for here. That's gonna bring that, sol that solid form a little bit closer in. So let's go ahead and see if we can get that a little bit more without it overlapping. Ah, and see, that's where our merge threshold is coming in here. Let's go ahead and turn that off. I don't want things to get stuck or overlap, but you can kind of see how it's overlapping there. And honestly, we probably could just merge those. Let's see how our interior is looking here. Oh yeah, you can kind of see how things are kind of, we got rid of that, that nice curve that we were getting there. So let's do this. See, this is the part of 3D modeling that I like, is I like being able to experiment and to try in something a little bit new, but also a way to be able to get this working uh, in a few different ways. So that's one way that we could have tried doing that, but obviously it wasn't doing what we wanted. So to keep this glass in the, the glass part and the stem separate, I think I just wanna cap this off. Cause if we cap it off, it's going to go ahead and give us that form that we're looking for. But to do that, I wanna give this a little bit of separation because if we keep it capped, um, but these are uh, stacked on top of each other, it's going to overlap and it won't look correct. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this row of faces here by hitting X and then faces. And you'll see here what we're kind of working with. So we have a capped outside, but no interior now on this face. Um, and it's trying to emulate as if that face was closed for us in this case, because of our solidify modifier that we have affecting here. Um, but we will, oh, well, you know, we got to turn that solidify. We got to apply that solidify. That's probably why that wasn't working. So let's go ahead and apply that. Let's get out of edit mode. And let's apply that solidify modifier because I think that's a decent, that's a decent um, thickness, I think, for this. So let's go ahead and apply that. So now we're affecting that interior face more uh, correctly because what we were doing was we were giving it the outside. So when we were scaling things inward, it wasn't working. So now we can recreate that, um, that, that selection that we were doing before by uh, right clicking and uh, doing this through wireframe. So I'm just gonna speed along here and do that really quick. Um, because I didn't do it right. So let's get it working the way it's supposed to. Okay, all right, so back here we have this selection and we're still in our scale tool. So let's go back up to the Z here. And now let's go ahead and bring this in and see what we're working with now. See, now this time it's not affecting that, that curve nearly as much. So if I control Z that, just so we can kind of see what it did. Uh, now we wanna hit control shift Z to undo that. See, it's not affecting the outside anymore. It's only affecting that inside structure, which is exactly what we were looking for previously. So now, actually, what I'm thinking is maybe we can just do merge at center here. Nope, see, that's gonna screw that up here. So let's do merge collapse. No. Merge at cursor. <laughs> see, this is the kind of playing around that I like doing with this stuff. So let's just bring this in a little bit closer. And we'll say merge um, by distance. And we're gonna go ahead and drop this menu up and let's go ahead and just turn that up a little bit. So that way it actually merges those points together. So now we have a thick cup with thickness, but then a solid um, interior for the base, which is exactly what we're looking for. 
So we can go ahead and hit tab and that's basically this this uh, glass done. Um, but we can kind of see here, it's still kind of faceted. Um, we don't have quite the look that we're looking for for this one yet. Um, so what we wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and add what's called a subdivision surface to this. And that's gonna give us a um, the solid form of this object. And we can kind of see how that's looking here um, in our object mode, which is what we're in. And we'll see now that we've kind of made um, some changes down here to the bottom that things aren't holding quite the way that they're supposed to now that we're adding this extra surface. Um, and especially because I want to turn this up just a little bit. Let's turn this up to three. You can kind of see that with a, based off of our reference here, that this is a little bit of a harder edge. It doesn't curve nearly as much as what our object is doing. So we're gonna wanna try to fix that by adding some holding lines. So let's go back into edit mode here. And I'm gonna turn this off so that way while we're in edit mode, it's not gonna show the shape that we're working with. And I think what we're going to do is I'm just gonna add a bevel on this edge here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the edge we're working for. I'm also gonna go ahead and hit G, um, or I'm sorry, I'm gonna go ahead into the select box here. So that way I can do my box selection without having to worry about accidentally scaling something. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select this edge loop and I'm gonna hit control B. That's gonna go ahead and bevel this edge. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and click and, or not. Ah, there's our interior. So let's go ahead and grab this again. Come on. And let's go edge, bevel edges doesn't seem to be wanting to do it. So let's go in this menu and see what it's doing. We want to do the width. And you see here how that bevel was able to add some edge loops there. Um, I also want to give it a little bit of a gentle curve. So we're going to go ahead and add an extra segment on the top there. So now if we go back into object mode, we can see that now we have a little bit of a harder edge. So let's go ahead and repeat that down at the bottom. We're going to hit control B. And we're going to do the same offset. And we're gonna add an extra segment there. And I'm gonna offset that just a little bit more. So now here, now that we're looking at this, we have a flat bottom and we still have the subdivision that we're looking for here. Um, and the rest of the glass just kind of flows into itself. And actually, I think I kind of wanna add a little bit more curve to this here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add, we're gonna select this loop of edges here and we're gonna, and we're gonna lift this up. Actually, let's see, how do I wanna do this? Let's add the loop first here. So we're gonna do control R. We're gonna add an edge loop that's going to stay about here. Now we're gonna grab this ring and we're gonna now just move that up. And now that's gonna give just a little bit more of a curve that's gonna be affected here. Instead of it just flowing right into the base, gives it a little bit more of that curved look. And actually I kind of want it to be a little bit more dramatic even. So let's go and I'm gonna to go to the front view, Y. And I'm gonna grab all of these, I'm gonna turn on X-ray mode. We're gonna grab all of these edges here that aren't affected. When I went into X-ray mode here a minute ago, I was going to go ahead and shift this down, but you can kind of see here that we have some deforms in our geometry here in the middle. And that's probably due to the merge we did when we were trying to finish off that solidification. So let's go, I'm gonna actually click into wireframe mode and let's dig into this a little bit. So I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard and we can kind of see here, this one, uh, this one vertice here is grabbing all of those extra faces. So let's grab each of three of these and let's go merge at center for those. And that's gonna, that's gonna close that up there. And I think that's the only one that that was doing that with. One just a little bit off that wasn't grabbed from that initial um, separation there. So that's looking better. Okay, great. Perfect. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go back into our solid view and let's go out of X-ray. Oh no, we want X-ray mode on because we're gonna go ahead and shift this down a little bit. So let's go into our front view and we're gonna go ahead and grab these points here. And we're gonna go ahead and set G and we're gonna go ahead and shift this down just a little bit on the X. And now we can actually give this curve a little bit more oomph by selecting those points. And we're gonna go ahead and just bring this up as well. So now that our base um, has a little bit more of a gentle curve that is flowing into the hard part of the edge, just just slightly, because we don't have much um, geometry separating this out. So say for example, if I added another edge loop here, and let's just give this a little bit of a motion here. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and slide this vertice really quick. I'll probably go into edge mode to do that. 
let's just slide this edge really quick. Edge slide. So we're, we're working this just, just a little bit. So that way we can kind of see what it's doing. We're gonna shift that just a little. I mean, that doesn't affect it too much, but let's add that little bit of extra geometry there just as a hold, a good separator between those points. Um, and we can actually probably drag that down on the Z just a little bit, just to make that flat edge a little bit more dramatic. Let's look at our reference and double check to see how that's looking. Yeah, I think that's okay. Perfect. Okay. So that is modeling this particular kind of a wine glass on a regular um, vertex based mode. Um, and the next mug that we are going to do is going to be, um, actually it's more of a pint glass. The next pint glass that we're going to be doing, and we will be using a different method starting with a cylinder and working more in a box modeling method instead of with that vertex point. Just, just to see a different kind of a workflow for this. Okay, so now that we have finished up this wine glass, we're gonna go ahead and start on our pint glass. Um, what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and hide these two reference images, and we're gonna go ahead and start just like we did back at the beginning of our scene with the uh, number pad one with the front view. We're gonna do shift A, and we're gonna go ahead and add a, oh, I'm still in edit mode on the wine glass. You really wanna make sure you're not in the right edit mode or else your, your buttons are gonna look a little different. Shift A, we're going to add another reference image. Reference image, we're gonna go ahead and load our pint glass. And so since this one is a relatively decent size, oh, uh, you know what, let's actually scale it up just a little bit. Um, and let's move it back on the Y axis just a tad so that way we have some working room. Let's take a look here. So instead of doing this the way we did the last model, we're gonna do this slightly different. Um, this one we're going to be doing it um, with the box modeling method. So what we're gonna do, since this object is primarily a cylinder, we're going to start with a cylinder. Easiest way to do that, right? So we're gonna do mesh, cylinder. Now, 32 faces is a lot to kind of start with. So I'm gonna bring this number down. Let's do, oh, I usually like to work in numbers of four. Let's do eight. No, 12, 12 is good. Um, we're also going to uncap this so that way we can make our own tops and bottoms this time. Um, especially since we're gonna be doing thickness with this, I wanna make sure it's working the way we want it to. Um, depth, two meters, the radius is about a meter, but that's fine because we're gonna be doing our own geometry adjusting to it. So that's gonna be good there. So we're gonna go ahead and apply this. Um, let's go ahead and hit G and let's move this down to the base of our model. So I'm gonna do G and then Z, move that down to our base here. And now let's go into our X-ray mode. So now this one is going to be the box modeling method because you're starting with a uh, mesh to be able to model off of. So we have to add geometry to this mesh to be able to get this to uh, deform the way we want it to. So the best way to kind of start with this is we kind of look at our basic shape and we go, okay, we have we have to match this on both sides. It's it's gonna be the same on either side, left and right. So we're probably gonna wanna actually duplicate our reference image and put it over here, but let's not worry about that right now. We're just gonna get the basic shape to start and then we'll kind of buff things out as we need to. Um, so first things first, we wanna get the general shape of this object. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a loop cut. Oh, we should probably go into edit mode first. So I hit tab to go over in edit mode. Let's add a loop cut here, and we're just gonna bring it down at the bottom. That's gonna represent the bottom edge of our, um, the glass to the scene here. And let's go ahead and grab this bottom edge. We're gonna hit Alt and select, just like we did before. Maybe, there it goes. And I'm just gonna scale this out to kind of roughly match the bottom of our reference. Again, things are gonna be a little skewed because of the perspective. Not as bad as the last image, um, but we should be able to still make things kind of flat and kind of work off from there. Um, I just did a drag select to kind of match that up here. Okay. Now let's look at this here. So we can kind of scale this out a little bit. So we already are looking that we have a little bit of a taper going on. Um, let's see here, let's go ahead and bring this up. And the nice thing about this too, since we left this end gone open, is we actually can now um, press E and we can extrude, extrude this outwards and then scale it out 
to get that look that we're going for. And actually this line here probably needs to come out a little bit. Ooh, not that way. Come on, work with me here. Okay, let's see what we got here. I'm just gonna bring this up just a tad. We were working with the bottom of the model instead of the bottom of the reference here. Okay. So we're grabbing all those edges again. We're gonna extrude upwards on the Z. Oops, hit the wrong button. I hit control Z there only because I don't wanna accidentally apply an extrusion um, on a line that may already have one or more faces. So you can kinda see here what happened. It, when you hit E, it creates an extrude. Oh, actually it didn't do it. Didn't do what I thought. We're good, we're Gucci guys, okay. <laughs> So let's let's go back to the front. Uh, let's go ahead and extrude out on the Z, and then we're going to scale it outwards, just like that. And actually, I'm going to hit Control R in the middle here, and I'm just going to give that another loop cut, just to kind of give that a little bit more geometry here. I'm going to bring this side in just a tad. Okay. Uh, actually, I can bring this one in just a little bit more as well. All right. We're going to go ahead and bring this in. Come up to this curve here. And we're going to scale that inwards just a tad. And then we're going to extrude this up to the top. Uh, let's go to thereabouts. I'm going to bring it in just a little bit. Okay, so that is our general shape for our pint glass. Looks pretty good. Um, there are definitely some curves here that I think I want to tighten up on though, um, because it doesn't quite have that curved look that I'm looking for yet. Um, it's still pretty general because we don't have the shader on yet to actually show that it's glass. Um, but we can kind of refine this a little bit more by pulling things in a little bit um, while it's still low poly like this. So like for example, this here, I want to accentuate this um, this bubbled out portion a little bit. So to give it a little bit more um, of that perspective we're looking for, I'm just going to scale this part in just a little bit more and then bump these ones out a little bit. So let's hit shift, we're going to hit alt. We're just going to bring this out just a tad past the reference so we can accentuate that bubble there. Um, and that will also help with the thickness when we add that to this as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, but first, what I want to do is I kind of want to add that um, bottom layer first to this. Um, so that way it doesn't get in the way of what we're working on next. Um, so let's go into edit mode. Let's go into face mode as well. What do we, what do we got going on here? I'm hitting all kinds of buttons. Three, there it goes, okay. All right, so we got this edge ring here. And what I wanna do, hmm, let's see here. What I wanna do is I wanna make this solid. So realistically, we just wanna cap that top and bottom. So I'm gonna extrude these faces in just a tad, just like that. <laughs> it did not do what I wanted to do. Oh, you know what? Maybe we should get, maybe we should give it some thickness first. So let me just back up a little bit there. Um, go back into face mode and let's go ahead and give this a solidify modifier just like before. And but for this one, we're gonna give it a little bit of a thicker, thicker look to it here. That way we have some mesh to work with on the inside. Okay. Yeah, you can kind of see here based off of our reference as well, if we kind of look at this for a second, um, this one kind of does have the same thing where the glass is gonna come in and up a little bit, but it's past this. So we're gonna to try to emulate that same kind of a feel um, with a little bit of a taper from the outside part of the glass. Hopefully it'll come through with the material. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply this. Okay, and now we have these faces that we can work with in the center. So we're gonna go ahead and click and select those. 
This is what I was trying to do a second ago. And we're going to do an extrusion. We're going to scale it inwards just like this. Let's say about there. And then I want to cap the edges on the top and the bottom. So, oops, don't want to extrude that though. Ah, dang it, I did it again. <laughs> so let's do two. We're gonna grab this edge loop at the top here. Maybe. Yes, it did grab it. I just couldn't read it. I couldn't tell. Let's turn on uh, X-ray mode. That usually helps me a little bit better with that. And we're gonna do edge face. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to face and we're going to do that grid fill. Loops. Oh, loops are not connected by wire boundary edges. Okay, so we need to go ahead and open this up a little bit more. So these faces in the middle here, we're going to need to click and select these ones. And we're going to go ahead and hit X and then faces. Now we can go ahead and cap this off. So let's go ahead and go back to edge mode. I'm going to click and select this. Come on. There it goes. And then we're going to go to face and we're going to do a grid fill. And we're going to go with, looks like we can only do five this time. So let's go with four. So you see what it's doing is it's creating a polygon with that instead of it being like a um, end gone, just a blank face, it's going to have the correct geometry because every polygon has to have four sides and that creates a just clean geometry all around. Okay, so now that is filled, we then can come down to this bottom layer. We're gonna do the same thing. Face, grid fill, and we're gonna go to four. And I want it to line up the same way. And it looks like, go to the top here, and then we're gonna flip it. Did I do four? Yeah, I must have, because that doesn't look, yeah, four, okay. But I think the offset needs to be a little different. I want to make sure that those top, the top and the bottom are going the same way. So it's going to be something like that. Nope, one back. Just like that. Oh, really? Oh, I was right, so... I'm so confused at the moment. <laughs> the, the the this is throwing me off here. Okay, so let's just double check. See, okay, no, I was wrong. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. See what's gonna bring that back. No, okay, so but now I can cap it again. So it's just straight up and down. I was having a hard time with the X-ray going through that way. So let's go ahead and grid face, and we're gonna do four, and we're gonna offset that by one, so that way it's uniform with the center point. So we'll go ahead and move this around. And that's looking pretty good so far. Um, that'll give us that solid point that we were looking for. But we also, I think, want to give us that little bit of a gap. So what we're going to do next is we're going to grab these faces. Uh, and we also want to grab the faces for that bottom layer here. So I'm just clicking selecting these. Okay, and then I'm gonna do a scale and I'm just gonna bring those down just a tad. And then on the front view, I'm gonna turn X-ray back on and I just wanna raise that up on the Z just slightly to give it that curve and that separation from the in part of that glass. And that is this one almost done. I wanna do a few things. So let's add that subdivision modifier that we threw on the last one and see how it looks smooth. So let's turn this off. And we want, so let's see here. Let's do three subdivisions. So that's coming out pretty well, actually. Um, I do think that we want a little bit of a harder lip, but we want it to be s soft on the outside, but a little bit harder on the inside, or a little bit of both. We're gonna bevel those top edges. Um, and same thing with the bottom. We're gonna, cause that right now the bottom is it's holding, but it's not quite flat. So we wanna get it a little bit more rounded out at the bottom. Um, so let's go ahead back into edit mode 
And let's go ahead and bevel this. So let's go to two, grab this edge, and I'm gonna grab the other edge as well. I'm gonna do control B. And we're just gonna offset that by a little bit here. Okay, yeah, that's giving that a nice, a good, nice hard lip for that there. And then down at the bottom, we're just gonna do the same thing with this. We're gonna do control B and we're gonna offset that. Oh, I only grabbed the one edge though. I need to grab the whole thing. Control B. And this time the actual mouse wheel is letting me do it. And so that's gonna hold that edge down there at the bottom too. So if we shade this smooth, looks like the faceting is still happening here. Do we wanna go up one more sample? No, I think that's what we want there. Because once we throw the material on here, this is still just solid mode. So if I go here, just as an example here, um, let's just throw, I'm just gonna change this material a little bit here to something a little bit more um, recognizable. Let's just throw this marble shader on here, just so we can get an example of what this is gonna look like. And we're gonna turn this into material preview mode. Oh, well, that's just a material preview. So, but this is gonna give us an idea of what those um, bumps are looking like here. Those facets are a little harsh, but I think it's just because we don't have any actual material on this yet. Um, so we can go ahead and apply this. Well, we'll leave the subdivision surface for now. But that is going to be the finished pint glass for now. So. We have now on our scene, we'll go ahead and look at this together here. So we have the wine glass, which is much larger than our pint glass. <laughs> so we have our wine glass and our pint glass, which we need to rename in our collection. And we'll call this pint. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're gonna shrink this down now since we have the scale we want. We'll make that a little bit more realistic here. Go ahead and just kind of make sure they're kind of lined up. Okay, alrighty. So we have a pint glass and we have a wine glass. So in the next video, we are going to be looking at um, how to unwrap and add materials to these um, models, as well as kind of getting the material set up and then the last part of the series, we are going to go over rendering. So make sure you tune in every Monday for another Make It Monday, as well as our series on Blender Basics. Hope this video was informational to you guys. And uh, if you like what you saw, please feel free to go ahead and subscribe to Facepalm Studio. Um, we also have a Facebook and a Twitter that we're updating constantly with our new videos, as well as updates on what we're working on. Um, if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see or anything you wanna learn how to make in Blender, I am still learning myself, but I am happy to take suggestions so that way I can look it up and then show you guys the best way that I have not found how to do it. Um, make sure you guys stay tuned for more awesome videos this week, as well as um, next week video on materials for this uh, project that we're doing here for these pint glasses. So until next time, everybody, keep creating, save the pain, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye.